My name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number. 59. Please turn to it. Page number 59 and today is our lesson number 7. Today we are going to talk about multiplying and dividing by decimals. The very first problem that you see there, example number 210, example 210, 2.10, which deals with decimals. We are being asked to multiply 6.10. 5 point rather 5.62 by 0.3. Now here's the idea, here's the deal. When you have to multiply a number containing decimals with another number containing decimals, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest, the smartest way to deal with the scenario is to completely ignore the decimal point. Completely ignore it, pretend it is 562. 562 and simply multiply it by 3. You know how to do that. Simply multiply it by 3, that's all. 6 times 2 is, uh, 3 times 2 is 6. 3, 6 3's are 18. 8, carry 1. 5 3's are 15. Plus 1 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. Now we're going to worry about our decimal. Watch what happens. Of course, in reality, we do not have in reality, of course, we do not have 562 times 3, we have 5.62 times 0.3. So now we go and insert our decimal point where they belong. 5.62 is it belongs here and right here. And simply count how many decimal places do we have. We have two decimal places here, one, two, and we have one decimal place here. There are three decimal places, and the decimal is here. Decimal place is here right now. Just move that thing three places. One, two, and three. Voila. It becomes 1.6 is the answer. The answer is 1.686. One more time, just count the decimal places. If you if you see, where can I put it? 0.3 is just 0.3. If you insert zero after that, that doesn't matter. It's still only one decimal place because that are, those are zeros. If they're zeros, they don't count. Unless there happens to be one here. Now it has one, two, three, four, five decimal places. But if they are all zeros, then it's just 0.3. That's one decimal place, those are two decimal places. So you take your decimal and move it three places. That's all. Next one. Next one is on the following page, where it says simplify the expression. And we are being asked to find a volume of a certain things. And they're given the three dimensions. I need the room, obviously. I'll get out of your way for a second. Two point eleven. Two point eleven. We are being asked to figure out eleven point four centimeters times seven centimeters times three point zero six centimeters. Let's see what we can do. Again, we're going to ignore the decimals for the time being. We're going to completely ignore the decimal places for the time being. So the first quantity we have is 114. 114 times 7. Let's do that first. 114 times 7. 7 fours are 28. And in case you do not understand what I just said, this is what I said. 7 fours are 28. That's how the, the Americans say 7 times 4 is 28. This is how we speak. 7 4 is 28. 8, carry 2. 7 1s are 7. You see, 7 1s are 7 times 2 uh, plus 2 is 30, uh, which is 9, and then 7. Now we multiply by 306. 306. 8 6 are 48. 8, carry 4. 
34. 9, 6, and 54. This is where you have to slow down. Slow down, otherwise you're going to mess it up. Otherwise you're going to muck it up. Muck it up with an M, not an F. Don't get excited. Muck it up. 9, 6 is a 54, plus 4 is 58. 8, 35. 7, 6 is a 42, plus 5 is 47. The next we have to multiply it by 0. There is no point in wasting our time by 0. It's just going to be 0. It's just going to take one place. That's all. Now let's do by 3. Before you do it by 3, I'm going to erase this 5 and the 4 so that we don't, conf we don't confuse ourselves. Let's do it by 3. 8, 3 is a 24. 4, carry 2. 9, 3 is at 27, plus 2 is 29, 9, carry 2, 7, 3 is at 21, plus 2 is 23. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I myself, hopefully, did not muck it up. And as I'm looking at it, I probably did. Who knows? We'll find out. Let's finish this problem first, and then I'll tell you what, what we should do had we been taking the real exam right now. In the real exam, you know, this bloody thing is going to take forever. It's just annoying. It's irritating. No, no, no. That's not what you do in the real exam. Real exam is a multiple choice exam. You don't have to find the precise answer. You just have to figure out an answer close enough to the real answer so that you can recognize the real answer. That's all. You just have to figure out. You have to be able to figure out a good estimate of the answer. And you can figure out what the right answer is because the answers are going to be a little far apart. Unless they have to happen to be very close to each other, then and only then, you may have to do the precise work, but that does not happen very often. That does not happen very often. Most of the time, the answers are a little bit far apart. So I'm going to show you in a second what we should have done if we had been taking the real exam right now. This is not what we do in the real exam. This is just for exercise. So we get 8, 8, 7 plus 4 is 11, carry 11 does 10 plus 4 is 14, carry 1 does 4, I get 2, 4, 4, 188. Now we take care of our decimal. Okay, let's see what we can do about decimals. So we have 11.4, so that's one decimal right here. Then we have 7. So that means the final answer that we got was 798. That 798 actually is not 798. That 798 actually is 79.8. And then we multiply that by 3.06 right here. 3.06. Let me put it in a different color. I have to do my blue one. Oh, that doesn't work either. I'm going to put it in black. I had a tough time getting the thing open. The bloody thing was stuck. And for a brief second, I did begin to question my virility. Anyway, let's carry on. So that's. 79.8 79.8 times 3.06 this one has one decimal place right here and this one has two decimal places which means the final answer whatever it is we just have to move the decimal places three places to the left so here is our decimal place move it three places one two three is that the answer yes 244 244.188 is the final answer, which is the precise answer. A precise answer is not something we really need for the exam. What we need in the exam is a good estimate. Let's do that estimate, shall we? This was a waste of time. This is not what we'll do in a real exam. Here's what we do. Okay, pay attention. Pretend this is 11 for the time being. And pretend that this is 3. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 times 11. Let's find that out, shall we? Listen, listen to me first and see, what, see if it makes any sense to you. 7 times 3 is 21, and 11, times 11. That is very easy to do. Times 1 is just 21, and then again 21, and we get 1, 3, 2. Now we have to do a little adjustment. We have to do a final, uh, some refinement here. We are multiplying it by 11 and a half, almost. 11.4 is very close to 11 and a half. Here we multiply it by 11. So 21 times 11 is what we are getting here. Ask yourself, what is half of 21? So this is this quantity represents 231 represents 11 it represents 11 21s this equals 231 are or rather 11 11 21s are 231 
but we don't have 11.20 months, we have 11.5 or rather 11 and a half. What is half of 21? Half of 21 is about 10. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to just add 10 to it, which represents half 11 or rather half 21. And there you go, 241. 241 is our estimate. Of course, we know the real answer is 244. That's pretty damn close to it. I do not think they're going to give you two answer choices very close to each other in the range of just three. Because what they're looking for is, if you know your decimal places, so the answers are going to be far apart actually in the multiples of 10. They're just going to keep moving around the decimal points. You just look for something that's close to 241. This is 244. That's your answer. That's how we do it. One more time. What did we do here? This is this is half of 21. This 10 represents half of 21. This 231 represents 11 21s. 11 21s and half of 21s. That's 11 and a half of 21s. That's it. That's your answer. One last thing that I want to talk about, and I don't want to raise this part because we're going to need this in a second. The one last thing that I want to talk about is actually the mistake that is in the book. I need the room here. I need the room big time, so I'm going to erase all of this part. Listen carefully. We have 11.4 centimeters, 11.4 centimeters times 7 centimeters times 3.06 centimeters. At the end, the unit that we should get is centimeters times centimeter times centimeter. It's a volume. It's a volume of something. It's the bloody thing is the volume because we're given the three dimensions. And therefore, the final answer is 244 centimeter centimeter cube or or 244 cubic centimeter. That's how we say it. The book is wrong. In the book, they tell you that the final answer is 244 centimeter. That unit is wrong. It's not 244 centimeter. It is 244 cubic centimeter. There's a world of difference between the two, two concepts. Anyway, that was it. Let's do one more next month, which is the problem that you see in the bottom of the page, on page 60 at the very bottom. We are on page 60 right now, as you know. I'm going to get out of your way and let you take in this thing, take in as much as you like, knock yourself out, just don't inhale, as Mr. Clinton tells you. Well, number, last one, next one. So one more time, the unit in the book is wrong. The correct unit is centimeter cube or cubic centimeter. It can be read either way. Both way of reading this is correct. Some people prefer to call it centimeter cubed, which is the more mathematical, the more proper, more academic way of saying it. But in our daily language, in the colloquial terms, it is called cubic centimeter. The next one we have is 2.12, which is 0.48 divided by 1.2 well here's what's going on okay listen to me one more time do not follow the procedure that they explain to you in the book it is annoying it is irritating it is time consuming and you're going to be more prone to making mistakes if you try to do the problem in a very academic way which is the way the book is always going to explain to you here's another way I need the room obviously let's get rid of it Listen very carefully. Whenever, whenever we are given one decimal place being divided by another decimal place, first thing that you want to do is convert this into fractions. Let's do that first. How can we write 40, 0 0.48? 0 0.48 is same as 48 over 100 divided by, how can we write this as a fraction? That is simply 12 divided by 10. We know 12 divided by 10 is 1.2. 
Now ask yourself, what do we do when we have one fraction being divided by another fraction? Well, it's right here. It says right there, when we have one fraction being divided by another fraction, we take the first fraction right here, first fraction, 48 divided by 100, and we multiply it, we multiply it by what? By the reciprocal of the other fraction. The reciprocal of the other fraction is 10 divided by 12. That's all. Divide top and bottom by 10. If you do that, you can knock out this zero. Divide top and bottom by 12. If you divide top and bottom by 12, you can knock out this 12, and 48 is going to become 4. Divide top and bottom by 2 one more time. 4 is going to become 2, and 10 is going to become 5. So the final answer is 2 fifths. Voila. The final answer is 2 fifths. Or, if you want to express this thing in decimal, then you could have, we could have left it as we could have left it left this as 4 over 10. We had 4 over 10. 2 fifths is same as 2 fifths of course is same as 4 over 10. And we could have expressed this thing as decimal as simply 0 0.4. It's really up to you. Well, it's not really up to you. It's up to the people who give you the exam as to how they present the answers to you. If the answers are presented to you in decimal, then of course you have to be quick enough to realize that 2 fifths is 0 0.4. Or vice versa. I will see tomorrow, okay? Let's see what we have tomorrow before we... Oh, tomorrow we're going to continue with the same thing of multiplying and dividing by decimal. We're going to do the four problems that you see there on page 61, which are the ex exercises, the practice problem as they call them. Alright? Bye now.